I entered Q3 with a 100K deal in verbal commit and ended up losing it in one of the most ridiculous ways imaginable. This is a story I've been wanting to tell you guys for a while. And part of the reason why I'm making this video is so that I can officially put an end to that chapter because it, it truly was heartbreaking fashion. This deal, they gave us verbal commit. We were the vendor of choice. They agreed on price. We finalized red lines. We had strong executive alignment and it was one of the most egregious outcomes, if not the most ridiculous outcome of my entire career. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how this deal came about, how I worked it so that we were in a position to actually win the deal and then lessons learned from the deal as well. And I really think that that part's the most important because it's something I've been spending a lot of time thinking about. So to provide some context, I was working a deal with a large retailer, over $2 billion in revenue, over 10,000 employees. They had looked into my company about a year ago, but they just weren't at a place of maturity to, to make that purchasing decision. So they continued with the status quo of how they were doing their program um, previously and just historically. And there, there were all sorts of pain points with it, but they just weren't ready to change. Fast forward a year and SDR sets up a meeting with a director level contact um, because the SDR had been reaching out to the, the C-level prospect who had met with us a year ago and actually has a relationship with one of the executives on my team. So that further reinforced why I thought we were gonna win the deal. So this C-level executive told the director, hey, go meet with these guys, see what's changed on their end, da da da. So I meet with this director level, this guy, he holds his cards to his chest a bit, but he basically says, look, we hate the way we're doing our program today. We want to update it. Tell us more about why you may be a better fit. I know that this is going to potentially be a massive deal. So I, I pull out all the stops on that next conversation for a discovery call. We went from the initial meeting to a discovery call. We, we bring in that director C-level contact. I bring in a resource from my end, a, a solution strategist, someone that they don't give demos, they talk about program design and strategy. So we, we brought the big guns in, we prepared a presentation, we added a ton of value. Uh, the call went well so that we then scheduled a solution presentation. And then I brought on a solution engineer, um, a, just basically a personalized resource to run the demo. And I also brought on an implementation partner. And, and the executive from that team so that we could really share, hey, this is how we've done this for other retailers. This is the outcomes they've recognized, the value, da, da, da. So we do this, goes really well. And then we set up another call, we talk about pricing. And then at that point, the deal stalls a little bit. And they're in this, this period of deciding on a vendor. So they go cold a bit. We eventually get them back to the table and they say, yeah, we plan to make a decision in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if we do select you, you'll hear from our procurement team. So I end up getting an email introduction from the director level contact I'd been working with to their head of procurement. And I thought, wow, this is a, this is a really great sign because they said, if we get in front of procurement, that means we're the vendor of choice. I get in front of procurement and this lady, she almost was, was so oblivious that it made me overthink everything. And she said, there's another vendor. Um, we're really concerned about price. I spent an entire day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. meeting with my team. I met with this procurement lady twice, and we were just talking about strategy, trying to finagle it, trying to pull out all the cards, all the tricks. We ended up discounting the proposal and just giving her something too good to refuse. In addition to this, I actually drove to their HQ office, uh, which, which was local to where I'm at, and I, I, I prepared two swag bags for the director and that C-level, just as additional reinforcement of, look, we are the right partner. We really want to earn your business. We want to work with you. And I walk into these swag bags to their corporate HQ. I'm wearing shorts and t-shirt, classic tech employee. I walk in and there's a glass room to my left with 10 executives meeting. Everyone's in professional dress clothes. The receptionist looks at me as soon as I open the door, she's like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? So I walk in and I say, okay, I'd like to speak with XYZ name. I, I have I have a gift. I come bearing gifts. She's like, not a chance. Appointments only. I'm like, hey, I, I drove all the way out of here. Can, can I just go drop it off to him? She's like, absolutely not. You can leave it on that rack over there where, where lunches are dropped off at. And I'm good at overcoming objections on cold calls, but in person, I was not expecting this. And she absolutely stopped me in my tracks and body bagged me and just... She, she, she put me in my place. So I left the bags, I took a picture, I emailed them. 
It was well received. So, so we're in this negotiation. We send discounted pricing and procurement ends up saying, yes, we, we accept your offer. You are the vendor of choice. Send us the contract. So I'm ecstatic. I have never closed a 100K deal. And this is a $100,000 ARR annual recurring revenue three year license. So my commission on this is going to be $15,000. It's going to be a lot of quota relief and I'm going to be in a great spot on my Q3 quota numbers. I'm pumped up. Send them the contracts. A week goes by, two weeks goes by. I'm not getting any updates. I'm starting to get a little worried. So I'm trying to get a hold of them. And then I end up getting a call from the director and he's like, Trent, bad news. We did not provide notice of opt out to our current vendor in time. Therefore, we have auto renewed ourselves into a three year renewal. Oh, and by the way, this is this Friday is my last day. And I'm thinking this is an absolute bombshell that there's no way this is true. It, you hear it. You say there's no way this is true. So I think maybe he's lying. I, I need I need the full story. So we, we leave that call and go back to my team and we're just like scratching our heads saying no way, no way. We immediately go to our C-level contact. I go back to the curb. I'm like, what is the deal? Their stories were a little different, but but the consensus was we did not provide a 90 day intend to not renew to our current vendor and they have auto renewed us into a three-year license. The reason why it's such a great business model is because it's recurring revenue. You send the contract, they sign, and it's, it's typically auto renewal unless they let you know otherwise. Some companies are stringing on this. Some companies say, we will take you to court, we will sue you if you don't follow your word. And I'm not sure if that would have been the case here, but this company was just risk adverse and they, they didn't want to roll the dice. So they ended up auto renewing themselves into a three year agreement with a vendor they did not want to work with one. So big L for them and tremendous L for Trent's because now there's no chance of getting the deal done. They, they told us, Hey, maybe we'll be able to negotiate and get this to a one year renewal. And I ended up following up with them. They said, yeah, license it through 2025. So I had a tough time digesting this. This was on the first week or two of the start of, um, the start of July, the start of Q3. So it was an absolute bummer. And you go through these scenarios in your head saying, if I had that, then I would be happy. And I'm going to talk about the lessons right now. Lesson number one is, is the details. The details matter. I, I was, I thought I knew the details before, but you, you got to have tough lessons like this to really understand mistakes to avoid in the future. Going forward, and I highly encourage you to do this as well. If you are trying to displace an existing vendor, try your best to understand the spend with that existing vendor, but at the very least understand what are the renewal dates? What dates are your contract valid from? So that if you decide to change, you can give them an opt out in time because I've seen other companies get forced into an auto renewal against their will. That is a critical detail that I missed. I must take responsibility for that. And that was my main lesson is pay attention to the details, ask the questions that maybe seem repetitive, maybe seem like, Hey, what, what, why are you asking me that? And that was a, that was a critical detail I missed, which resulted in us losing the deal. Um, and it was an absolute bummer. And that carries us into lesson number two, sports analogy, move on to the next play. Imagine watching your favorite basketball team or NFL team and, and, a, and a player just does something stupid and, and, and you, the quarterback throws an interception. You see them on the sidelines. They're all pissed off. All the teammates are like, Hey, it's okay. Okay. Move on to the next play. All that means is assuming you, you prepared, you tried your best, you control what you could control. Sometimes circumstances will not go in your way. You'll throw the interception, you'll lose the deal, but you cannot let that define you. You must forget it and move on, learn from it and move on to the next play. So I, I've been a victim to this. I've, I've felt myself thinking in those moments alone, outside of the workplace, in the shower, going on runs saying, man, if I would have closed this deal, I would have I basically been on my quota. I would have still been on track to promote. It's not fair. Why me? Why is this happening? And as soon as you start thinking like that, it, it just, it's just, it, it's the wrong way to think about it. So you got to move on to the next play. Hey, Trent, you lost the deal. You messed up. Got to take responsibility. You got to go figure out how to replace this. And, and you cannot let that find you. Even if it's good or bad, you got to move on to the next play. And that's what sales is all about. And then finally, the third lesson is just more pipeline. 
We talk a lot about pipeline generation on this channel. And I came into the quarter with this deal in verbal commit, assuming that it was gonna happen. So I, when I was doing my forecast, I accounted as if this deal had already happened. So when this deal doesn't happen, all of a sudden there's a hundred thousand dollar gap and I simply do not have the pipeline to make up for it. And that was a tactical error on my end. When you're an account executive, you get a big quota. Let's say your quota is hundred thousand dollars. You need four X pipeline. You need $400,000 in pipeline to account for your win rates, deals falling out, deals pushing. You need more pipeline than your actual quota. That's what it's all about. Those are my lessons from the deal. Um, I hope you learned something from this, this outline here today of me losing my $100,000 deal. We're gonna bounce back from it. I'm still in search for the 100K deal. If you got value in today's video, hit the like button now. Comment down below for the algorithm. Uh, subscribe for more sales videos just like this one. And if you're interested in being part of a community that's bigger than yourself, being surrounded by other like-minded people, they say you're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. So why not purposely put yourself in a position to be around other highly motivated winners? The first link in the description below is gonna be a link to my private membership community. We're 62 deep right now. We have a private Discord. Mostly everyone's in sales. I lead a weekly live call every Sunday evening where I answer your questions and also share what's top of mind for me so that we can crush the week ahead collectively. So if you wanna be a part of a group bigger than yourself and expand your network and horizons and connections and opportunities and knowledge, information and resources, click the first link in the description below. I hope to see you on our next live call Sunday. Talk to you in the next video.